Samia Khan, a teen reading ambassador from the National Library Board. The Teen Reading Ambassador Program aims to spread the love of reading to the wider community. And so, we are very honored to be interviewing the shortlisted authors and illustrators for the fifth edition of the Hedwig Anwar Children's Book Award presented as part of the Asian Festival of Children's Content Digital Symposium. This biennial award is presented to an outstanding children's book written by a Singaporean citizen or a permanent resident. Today, we are sitting down with the author and illustrator of Panjang, the tall boy who became Prime Minister, Mr. Pei Xing Hui and Mr. Andrew Tan, to find out more about their book and creative process. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Pei and Mr. Tan, and congratulations on your shortlist. I read your book and really love the message of accepting ourselves despite our differences. Could you tell us a little more about the book and yourself as the creator of this book? Mr. Tan, you could start first. Oh, okay. About myself, uh, I'm a freelance illustrator and uh, I do stuff for advertising agencies and picture books like Sherlock Sam. And uh, well, I like, I like drawing picture books and, and I do comics uh, for fun. And sometimes I get it published. So that's what I do. Well, uh, I'm a journalist as well as a writer. So I run a content agency called The Nut Graf. And uh, before that, I was with The Straits Times for 15 years. So covering a variety of uh, subject matters ranging from sports to politics and uh, also a number of years that, that I spent in China. So uh, I spent most of my time uh, reading and writing. So this was a, a great project for me to be on. That oh. is really interesting to know. Second question, why did you decide to create this book? Mr. Pei, you can start first. Well, I wrote the biography of um, our Singapore former Prime Minister, Mr. Go Chok Tong. It's called Tall Order. And after the book came out, um, there was interest in reaching out to a younger audience. Uh, and to me, that was a especially sentimental or, or, or familiar project, you might say, because uh, I have two very young kids myself. So, uh, they were very interested to know about the content of Tor Order, but clearly uh, they are preschool kids, so clearly Tor Order is a little bit uh, too tall of an, of an order for them. So the idea of capturing Mr. Goh's story, but for a much younger audience, uh, an audience of uh, between uh, five to nine years old, that was something that appealed to me and I thought hey, that, that might be uh, something worthwhile doing. Well, for me, it's like when I was invited, I thought it was a good opportunity because I kind of seeing Mr. Go on TV and, and as a prime minister as part of my childhood. <laughs> it's like I can't, can't give up the opportunity and also seeing that I could actually work with uh, Mr. Pei here. I mean, he's, he did very well in the Panjang book. And I thought, wow, it's like a good opportunity. And, I, and also as like working, uh, working on the book, I get, I mean, you get the opportunity to meet Mr. Go himself. So I thought that, that, that's, that's so cool. So, so yeah, so I took it up. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, also because, I like, also because I like picture books and I thought, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good opportunity basically. Wow, thanks for the insight. Third question, what message were you trying to convey to both children and their parents? Mr. Tan, you can start first. Pei, Pei was the one that was, was taking the lead on this. Um, but of course, then later on, I got the script and I was, we were trying to work together and trying to make a, a, a very narrowed down message. That So I think it was about um, uh, embracing, yeah, the, embracing the difference about yourself and seeing how it fits into, into what, you, what, you, were supposed, what you, you would become and how, how everything fits together and, and just embracing it making use of it and accepting it, yeah. Well, uh, when, when I was writing Tor Order, uh, clearly the theme um, of Mr. Goh's uh, Extraordinary Height uh, came up. And while I think for the rest of uh, Singapore and perhaps the rest of the world, looking at Mr. Goh, we always admire him for being so tall and being such a good representative of Singapore 
uh, globally, you know, for many years as our Prime Minister. But what struck me was uh, when I was interviewing him, the tall order, that he shared that when he was younger, when he was a child, and he was really very tall, and he didn't quite like, he didn't quite like it at all. In fact, um, it, it made him stick out. He was standing out too much. He became very self-conscious, you know, to the extent that he even hunched quite a bit just so that he wouldn't stick, stand out as much. And I thought that was a wonderful uh, uh, little story of him that many people did not know. And to be able to share that with um, young children and their parents that um, despite, you, you might be different, but really is, is, is okay. Embrace yourself, celebrate who you are, be proud of who you are, and everything, everything will be fine after that. That is really thought provoking. Fourth question, what was your creative process like? Has it changed over time? Uh, well, as a, as a journalist, my creative process in, in, in the past was uh, incredibly intense. Pretty much the, the moment and that I've uh, received an assignment, I have to get started almost immediately because of how tight deadlines uh, were and still are in the newsroom. But now, uh, writing books, uh, picture books, uh, and, 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 a, and a book itself, like, like, like Tall Order, I'm, I'm given a lot more time to, to think through my concept, to think through uh, how I would like to present a story. So in, in terms of my creative process, definitely I would say I have the, luck, I have, I have the greater luxury of time today uh, compared to um, the, the earlier part of my life as a, as a journalist. Uh, my creative process. Um, but the thing is, I, I, like, I like many different... Uh, art style, so, so sometimes choosing the right art style is always a challenge, especially during a tight deadline. But for this one, I guess because it's a, I mean, Mr. Go is such an important, important figure, there's a tendency to be very self conscious and be, be very worried about getting the pictures just right. So I was trying to figure out how to, how to make myself relax. So then when I saw my, my five year old uh, painting and drawing, so it's like, I want to draw. Because it's a kid's book and it's about his childhood, I wanted to, to capture that carefree, childlike kind of drawing. I didn't want to be very stiff and perfect, you know? So, so what I did was, uh, I just used the same paper as, as my five-year-old used, this, this IKEA roll of paper. <laughs> so I got it, then I just used a, um, a gouache and colour pencils, and I just did cut out. So I show you, uh, I show you here. <laughs> For example, like you see this one? You can see that it's actually, it's, they're actually cutouts. So the thing is, uh, it made me less self-conscious because supposing I'll do stuff in parts. So supposing if I mess up drawing Mr. Go here, I can just redraw him and cut it, cut it again, paste it again. I don't have to redraw everything. So it, it reduces the stress. And surprisingly, it was actually a lot quicker and a lot more fun. Okay, see this one? You can see that they're all, they're all cut out. And uh, it was kind of experimental and free and yeah, a lot less stressful. And I only had 20 days to finish everything because of that tight deadline. And somehow it made it fun and I could finish it faster than if I tried to make everything perfect. Yeah. Oh, I see. Question five. How is it like to work together and what challenges did you both face? I, I enjoyed the process a lot. Uh, we did not work uh, together physically, but we worked together very closely, exchanging our ideas all the time over uh, phone calls, uh, WhatsApp messages, and whatnot. And uh, it, it was just a great opportunity for me to work with Andrew because I've seen his work before and I really wanted to partner with him on this. And as you know, for a picture book, um, well, the story is only as good as uh, how Andrew is going to illustrate it. So uh, while I came up with the story, uh, it, I was uh, heavily uh, uh, dependent, uh, leaning on, on Andrew to help the story come alive for, for, for kids, you know. And, and I love the style that he adopted. What he, he showed earlier, actually, I've never even, I didn't even know that was how he did it. But uh, it, it's just a wonderful process to see how uh, it, it, it came together. And I, I would say that uh, Andrew is an incredibly... Uh, uh, active partner in this, uh, even with the story. So after I wrote the first draft, I'll check in with him. He would tell me, uh, well, in, in his view, what worked, what did not work. You know, uh, 
this part, like maybe you, 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 you can truncate this, expand a little bit more on that. So it was lovely to hear uh, how the story ought to be told from the point of view of the illustrator. Because uh, for me, I think in terms of words, I can be uh, pretty straightforward in that manner. But uh, Andrew gave me a, a really different perspective of looking at story and, and I, I found that incredibly educational. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it, was a, it was a good experience and a learning experience. It's also challenging. Like I say we, we, dealt, we dealt mostly through phone, phone calls. <laughs> yeah, and also it's like, um, yeah, so I get the script from, from, from him. And of course, I need to try to see how, how to make the pictures interesting. And sometimes when you think of a picture, then you think that some parts of the sentences, you don't want to repeat the same thing as what the words are saying. So you would have to tweak a bit. So there was a lot of tweaking to see how the words and pictures just work beautifully together or the best as you can. And of course, the challenging part was, of course, uh, if you want to find out certain details from Mr. Go, it's not so easy. I can't just call Mr. Go. Hey, Mr. Go, uh, how did your mother, how did your mother dress? Or how, what sewing machine did she use? I can't do that. I sometimes have to go through the publisher and say, okay, can you um, check with Mr. Go's team whether what, you know, the small detail. <laughs> Wow, okay, and finally the last question. What does the Hedwig Anwar Children's Book Award mean to you? Mr. Tan, you could start. Uh, uh, well, I think, I think the award is just, uh, 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 it's just a rec recognition for the book and I think it, um, well, it, it maybe encourages more people to pick it up and inspire more writers to, to, to write books, uh, yeah. It's really a great honour for to hear that uh, Hanjan, our book, my book with Andrew, uh, has been nominated for this award. And uh, especially because uh, Eru Anua is an uh, old family friend. And uh, my dad has uh, known Eru Anua and Hedwig since uh, from, from when I was a little boy myself. So uh, when I told him that uh, Hanjan has been nominated for this, uh, he, was incredibly, uh, he was incredibly proud. And that really sealed the deal for me. Thank you for your answers, Mr. Pei and Mr. Tan, and for taking the time today to share about your experiences creating this book. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of today's interview, but I can't wait to read your next book and all the best for this award. And to our digital audience, thank you for tuning in. We have come to the end of this interview, but please join us for the award ceremony on 4th of October 2020, presented as part of the Asian Festival of Children's Content Digital Symposium. This award ceremony will be streamed live on AFCC's Facebook page. You can also check out afcc.com.sg for more information. Once again, I'm Samia. See you at the Hedwig Anwar Children's Book Award 2020 ceremony.